So the state of California just told the Ninth Circuit to ignore recent Supreme Court decisions in deciding the California magazine ban case. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think that magazine capacity restrictions violate Second Amendment rights, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also want to give a shout out to one of the main sponsors of the channel, and that is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I highly recommend you take a look into USCCA, and I'll put a link to them down in the details section. So the state of California has submitted 228J letters to the Ninth Circuit, and this is in response to other uh, letters that were sent by plaintiff's counsel to the Ninth Circuit pointing to recent Supreme Court decisions that can be used as additional precedent and case law in them coming to the proper determination in the Duncan v. Bonta California magazine ban case. So some quick background on this Duncan v. Bonta case for those of you who are not in the state of California, you're not familiar with what's going on. This is a challenge to California Penal Code 32310, which is essentially a ban on any magazine that holds more than 10 rounds. In the state of California, you cannot buy, sell, import, manufacture any magazine that holds more than 10 rounds. There was a challenge to this in the Southern District of California, and a federal judge, Judge Roger T. Benitez, found that this law was unconstitutional. This led to what is known as Freedom Week in the state of California, where millions of magazines were purchased and brought into the state of California. Well, what happened after this is, of course, the state of California did not like that this law was overturned, so they appealed it up to the Ninth Circuit, and a three-judge panel reviewed this decision by the lower court judge and also found that California's ban on magazines that hold more than 10 rounds was indeed unconstitutional. Well, of course, the state of California, again, didn't like that, so they sought review by the en banc panel in the Ninth Circuit. So as of right now, the en banc panel has reviewed this case, oral arguments have been had in this case, and right now we are just currently waiting for a decision by that en banc panel. Well, there was some movement after the oral arguments since we're kind of in this holding pattern and waiting for them to issue their determination. There were a couple Supreme Court cases that popped up after oral arguments and those cases were submitted by plaintiff's counsel and plaintiff's counsel are the ones who are trying to overturn this unconstitutional law in the state of California. They submitted a 28-J letter to the Ninth Circuit and said, hey, look at these recent Supreme Court decisions. These can be used to help you come to the proper determination, in this case, Duncan v. Bonta. The first case is AFP v. Bonta, and this case involved whether the state of California could demand that charities and nonprofit organizations that solicit funds in California must hand over unredacted forms that contain the name and addresses of all donors who give $5,000 or more to that organization in any single year. The state of California put this invasive law into place to allegedly seek information to aid in the investigations of charitable misconduct. That is the rationale they said why they need your information, your name and address whenever you donate to organizations like two-way organizations in the state of California. Well, in reviewing this case, the lower courts and the Ninth Circuit found that what the state of California was doing was indeed constitutional. Well, a review was sought by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court granted review, heard this case, and in a 6-3 opinion written by the Chief Justice Roberts, the court held that the California law compelling disclosures of donor names and addresses was not narrowly tailored to meet the state's interest in investigating charitable misconduct. In coming to this determination, the Supreme Court used an analysis called exacting scrutiny, which is different from the easy to pass intermediate scrutiny that the state of California wants courts to use and which the Ninth Circuit used in reviewing AFP and which the state of California is wanting, once again, the Ninth Circuit to use, in this case, Duncan v. Bonta. So the AFB case is being put forward because it goes to the type of analysis that the Ninth Circuit has used in the past and that has been shot down recently by the Supreme Court when it comes to their use of intermediate scrutiny. The second Supreme Court case is Cedar Point Nursery v. Hasid, and this all involves the takings clause, which is a big issue in Duncan v. Bonta because the state of California is saying that you must either modify your magazine to hold only 10 rounds, you must destroy them, remove them out of the state of California, or turn them over to a law enforcement agency. And plaintiffs argue with the Cedar Point case that it reinforces the conclusion that California's retrospective and confiscatory magazine ban violates the takings clause. It requires citizens to destroy, surrender, sell, or permanently modify their lawfully acquired property, and therefore the law interferes with the right to possess which is even more fundamental than the right to exclude, which involved there that Cedar Point case, that's what that involved, excluding individuals from your property. So plaintiff's counsel submitted the 28J letter with these two additional case law and information to the Ninth Circuit, and then the state of California responded. And in their letters, essentially what they argue is that 
The Ninth Circuit doesn't need to listen to these cases. They should ignore them because they're irrelevant and don't apply here. When looking at the AFP case that was presented, the state of California states in their papers that Americans for Prosperity does not support plaintiff's position here. The Supreme Court addressed the requirements of the exacting scrutiny standard, which applies to First Amendment challenges to compelled disclosure of information. This case, of course, involves the Second Amendment and plaintiffs are challenging a regulation of large capacity magazines or LCMs, not a law requiring them to provide information to the government. Plaintiffs have not previously argued that the exacting scrutiny standard applies when analyzing Second Amendment claims, and this court has not applied that standard in this context. Instead, it has applied intermediate scrutiny under which the government must show that its law promotes a significant, substantial, or important government objective and that there is a reasonable fit between the challenged law and the asserted objective. Now, it's no surprise here that they want to completely ignore the fact that under any type of heightened scrutiny or any other type of a test other than intermediate scrutiny, that this law would not be upheld and that the Supreme Court has actually shot down a recent other case in the First Amendment context when they looked at anything other than intermediate scrutiny. And that's the whole point with putting forward the AFP um, case as a basis of why the Ninth Circuit needs to look at this issue. In their letter on the AFP case, the state of California goes on to say that for reasons the Attorney General has explained, Section 32310 is reasonably fit to California's compelling interests in reducing the frequency and lethality of mass shootings. The record in this case demonstrates that mass shooters who use LCMs inflict nearly three and a half times the number of casualties as those who do not. And California's LCM restrictions impose a very minor burden on any individual's ability to defend themselves. Then they go on to again put forward this argument that plaintiffs have still not identified any incident in which any Californian has actually fired more than 10 shots in self-defense. And should that circumstance ever arise, law-abiding adults may continue defending themselves by using additional firearms or swapping in a new 10-round magazine. Now, once again, this is an argument that the state of California hammered on hard in their briefs and uh, argued in oral arguments, and it was that this isn't a huge infringement of Second Amendment rights because, yeah, you can only have 10-round magazines, but you can have as many as you want. All you gotta do is reload, or all you've gotta do is switch and swap out guns and then continue to shoot. You can defend yourself. And also, they haven't pointed to any other case that this has happened where someone had to shoot more than 10 rounds in a single magazine to defend themselves. So this is an argument they hammered on a lot, and here again, they're using it to try to get around this case that has been presented to the Ninth Circuit as additional authority coming out of the Supreme Court. So when it comes to the Cedar Point case, the state of California argues in their papers that Cedar Point does not support plaintiff's argument that California's large capacity magazine restrictions violates the takings clause. They state that this case does not implicate any similar physical invasions. Individuals who lawfully obtained LCMs may modify and retain their magazines, or they may sell them for fair market value. If owners modify their magazines, a process that costs less than $10 and takes a few minutes, they may continue to possess and use them for the primary purpose, which is holding multiple rounds of ammunition in a single magazine. So that's what the state of California is arguing and stated in their letter. And that's exactly what the Cedar Point case is being used for. It is pointing to the fact that even a minor or a temporary takings or invasion of property is still a takings. So even if the en banc panel finds that this law is constitutional, this is likely going to go up for Supreme Court review, and then it's going to be up to the Supreme Court whether or not they grant this case review or not. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below, and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you guys like this video and like support the channel, and the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm. It helps to signal to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and this type of two-way news, and then it pushes it to more individuals. I cannot thank everybody enough for those of you who have recently liked, commented, and subscribed on my videos over the last week. You guys are definitely impacting this channel. You guys are helping me spread this channel to more individuals. You're helping to spread my videos to more individuals, and I cannot thank you guys enough. So even if you don't have a comment in mind, just comment down below. You're commenting to fuel the algorithm. And also, if you're a new subscriber, go ahead and comment down below that you're a new subscriber, and I will make sure that I comment back to you. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never get this nation with built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.